Brothers and sisters, today is Buddha's teaching day. 2,936 years ago, Buddha Shwajamuni taught Dharma in Varanasi, India. Five people and 84,000 gods listened to Buddha's teaching. And amazingly, he taught Four Noble Truth. And I taught them many places and many people really understand what is happiness and suffering. And now they're increasing happiness and decreasing suffering. I'm so grateful. And I asking Joanne to teach Dharma to others so that it's benefit everybody. He will offer you now. Kempo, thank you for allowing me to teach today. My name is Joanne, and I'm going to be teaching about the difference between sympathy and compassion from a Buddhist point of view. Most of us in America think about sympathy when a good friend of ours or a relative loses somebody or gets sick, and we send them a card or an email or we go over and talk to them and we say, oh, I'm so sorry you're feeling bad. Uh, we care about you and we don't want you to suffer. In fact, sympathy and compassion are not really viewed as different concepts in America. We think of sympathy, and it's described in dictionaries as empathy or pity, or compassion is described as sympathy or empathy. So essentially, we see them as pretty similar. So why do Buddhists look at sympathy and compassion so differently? One of the reasons is that we understand why we suffer, and we understand the causes of suffering. Buddha taught for the first time 2,936 years ago, and today is the anniversary, about the Four Noble Truths. I'm going to talk about two. One is that our negative thinking is the cause of our suffering. And negative thinking is anger, jealousy, greed, pride, and ignorance. And the other thing he taught was that our negative thinking is the cause of our suffering. So when Buddhists take a look at sympathy and compassion, they think that sympathy is kind of ineffective thinking. And the reason for that is that it's a lot of negative thinking. For example, if we go back to our friend who just lost a husband, wife, or daughter, or got sick, when we talk to them, we go and we kind of cry. And we say, oh, I feel so sorry for you. But all of that thinking is negative. It's not positive. We're not really helping them. And there's no action. There's absolutely no action that's associated with sympathy. Compassion, on the other hand, for Buddhists, has to do with the intention or desire to decrease suffering and also to decrease the causes of suffering and to think carefully about how to decrease suffering. That is action. So one really doesn't have any action, the other really does. So, for example, if you see your cat next door and the next door house is burning, if you're a sympathetic person, you may go, oh my god, my cat, my cat, and you'll panic, and you'll worry, and then suddenly you're really fearful that your cat is going to die. As soon as panic, and then you're immobilized. You can't do anything. So it's all negative thinking, and there's no action, and your cat may die. If it's compassionate view, then you'll see that your cat is suffering, and you recognize it. You're going to worry, oh no. My cat is going to suffer. What do I do about it? But then there's a logical way of thinking because you're not overwhelmed by negative emotions and negative thinking. You're thinking, do I have time to call 911? Do I have time to go to a friend and get them and help me with the cat? Or do I need to go run into that house and pull out my cat? So hopefully you get your cat out of the house. But the difference is that you are able to have effective thinking you're able to have logical thinking, and you take action. So 
when we apply this to more complicated situations, for example, having to do with cause, having to do with suffering, if we just take a look at compassion and suffering, it's kind of like finding someone who's starving to death. And you bring them a bowl of rice. So you feed that person one day. They're only looking at their suffering. But if you're really compassionate, then you're going to think about what is the cause of this person's suffering. And you'll go back the next day and you'll teach that person how to grow rice. So there's a subtle distinction between taking a look at the suffering and then doing something about the cause of suffering. Another way of looking at this is a little bit more complicated for us as Americans, I think. If, for example, you go to the grocery store and all of a sudden you see a father beating a little kid. If I were to ask you, who would you feel compassionate for? Would you feel compassion for both, one or the other? A lot of us would say, well, I'd have compassion for that little boy, that little child, because they're being beaten up and they could be really hurt. The Buddhist point of view is a little different because not only do we understand that this child is suffering, but we know that the father is also suffering. We also know that the, father, the father's negative thinking and action will result in even more suffering now and in the future. So we would feel compassion for the father and take a look at the cause of the father's suffering so that there will not be more damage in the future. Even if you throw this guy in jail, he'll get out in three days and he might beat up somebody else. Or the child may get hurt some more. So the first thing you want to do is take the child away from the father definitely want to address the suffering. And then you take a look at the causes of suffering. And this is probably a much better way of looking at how to deal with suffering. I hope that you in your life will be able to view this a little differently. That you will take action logically, effectively, when you see others suffering. Particularly if there are people that are close to you so that you can be a real help to those around you, that you can really help them decrease their suffering. So to summarize, really what Buddha is teaching us is we need to help others decrease their negative thinking, just as we need to decrease our negative thinking. And, uh, we will really have the opportunity to actually decrease suffering in this world. So thank you again. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you.